everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are on page three. Page three is a nice, simple one. Um, I want to do something kind of fun with the inserts. So we have a five by nine. So it is five by nine, and you're going to score a half inch on um, the five inch side, and then rotate it, score a half inch on the nine inch side, then rotate it and score another half inch. So basically a half inch on three of the four sides. And this pocket is gonna get installed on the lower part of page three. So there's something, I could feel something behind it. <laughs> okay, so that's it. So let's get going. Okay, it's going to go flush um, corner to corner across the bottom. There we go. And then we have um, a five and a half by eight, five and a half by eight, score half inch on the five and a half inch side. And I know I had one of these already taped. Here it is. Okay. And it's going to go flush and corner to corner across the top. There we go. Okay, now you can see, well, it's hard to see. But let me put something in the pocket to help. So here's our pocket. And... I'm just going to stick this in here so you can see there is significant overlap between the flap and the pocket. I do that deliberately because I want the flap to completely clear the edge of the pocket and still have room for a magnet so that we're not trying to put a magnet actually inside the pocket because once you get your inserts in, it gets thicker and thicker and the magnets stop, to, stop attracting. So that is the thought process there. And this should clear, actually I'll do it this way. My magnet looks dark because I was going to, um, I, I blackened it to, for some reason or another, but I'm not gonna use it that way. It's just gonna get covered up remember what I was thinking. Okay. Okay, and you can see there's plenty of space uh, for the paper to go around the uh, magnet and um, not reveal it even, even once the uh, papers are down. So, in fact, so yeah, so it's quite a ways. Okay, so that is basically the flap design. This feels like it needs to be burnished for flap and pocket design for page three. Okay, I'm going to organize my papers, and when we get back in a minute, we'll start decorating. Okay, everyone, here we are decorating page three. Um, so I'm going to pull in page two just so we can see these side by side. So I'm planning to embellish this with these two items and then I've chosen these two just because it pulls all the patterns in and then this pulls this in. So that's what the cover of the A side is going to look like for page three. And I still have one more thing to do on page two. Well, two more. Uh, add those embellishments and then also I want to... Um, no, I guess that's it. I, no, I still have the inside to do on page two. So so this is um, typically how I design uh, is I do all the A-sides um, while I still have lots of pattern to work with. And then I focus on the B-sides after the A-sides have been covered. So page two has the A-side, but not the B-side. And then page three is going to have the B-side. And then I can look at them side by side and do some embellishing and then open them up and decorate the rest. Uh, after I've covered the rest of the pages on the A side. 
So I want my prettiest patterns on the A side and I want my most subtle patterns on the B side because the B side is really where I plan to put my photos. Okay, and then we're gonna cover this pocket. And I need to put something in here so I can see the edge of it. There we go, let's see. It's a little bit crooked, but I think I can live with it. Okay, I can try it this way. Sometimes it fits better one way than the other. I don't know why, and it does. So I'm gonna lay it down this way. I think I might not have gotten my pocket down perfectly straight, which happens. Actually, I'm looking at it more closely and there's words on it so I'm gonna make sure I put it in the way the words go even if it's a little off at the top that's a little bit bi bigger border than I usually like but it's okay it's gonna be behind this flap okay so the next thing I did is I um, had some uh, piece of scrap um, I I um, used an ephemera card and cardstock backed it. Now I'm going to glue it to this chipboard because I want to have a little bit of dimension. And this chipboard happens to just be a scrap that I keep. I keep all my scraps around for this purpose. Okay. And now I'm going to center this on top of this scrap. And just so, just so you know, this is three and three eighths by five inches, three and three eighths by five inches, and that's the white cardstock piece. So basically what I was going for is an even border all the way around it. And then on the flip side, oops, I did that backwards. I'm gonna lift that off real quick. On the flip side, I put this trim piece, so I'm gonna actually reinstall this, this direction so that when you open this flap, it's got something covering the, the cream cardstock. burnish that real quick since it was starting to dry. Now I'm going to place this uh, on top centered and then when you open it you'll see I'm pulling the pattern in from the bottom. Okay. Put a little bead of glue in here because I didn't get quite high enough. There we That's that. That's that's it for now. I'm gonna go uh, focus on getting the rest of the A sides, and when I come back, and it'll still be part of this video, we'll go ahead and decorate the B sides, and figure out something for our insert.
I'm gonna leave this open because there was just a little bit of glue here and I don't want it to um, grab across here. So that's it for now. Um, I'll be back shortly. Okay, everyone, uh, we're on page three. I've got the rest of my um, elements trimmed out and I'm ready to go. So first, I want to share that I am going to use a Graphic 45 regular tag, and here's a package. So this is a regular size. What you see here is actually a cut apart, or no, uh, ephemera card that um, I placed in the die cutter and it works out perfectly. So it's cutting off slight edges, um, but I think it looks pretty nice. And let me see if I can find one that's in, that I haven't cut through. Hmm. Here it is. So here's what it appeared as at, in the ephemera pack. And then I trimmed it down with the um, die cut from Graphic 45, which fits perfectly on their tag. So I'm gonna start by adding some ink and adding this to the card. And then I have a couple of ideas on where I wanna place it. So I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna lay down the rest of the papers and then we're gonna look at some ideas on where to place the tag. Of course it can go in the pocket, but there's some other ideas as well. Oops, let's get our glue. <laughs> it almost looks as good this way as it does this way, but. Um, it does look nice this way, um, and it would make for a great little journaling card on this side, and then something else on the back side. But what I had originally planned was this, so I'm gonna stick with that plan. I may take the second ephemera card and flip it over um, and have this on the front side of that same uh, tag. Look nice. And then I've got this, if you buy the bundle, you're gonna get these uh, coordinating ribbons. And so I am gonna run a ribbon through here, but I'm not sure which one yet. I'm gonna wait until I finish embellishing the cover and um, I'm gonna use whatever ribbon I have left over. So now we're gonna set that aside and focus on the inside of um, page three. This is from the 8x8 collection. Okay, I'm going to tuck it slightly into the pocket and then back it out. Um, it's, it fits almost perfectly. I think an eighth of an inch might be inside the pocket. There we go. So what I had previously planned was to place this in the pocket but having set it aside and seeing it on the edge like so, I thought I might consider just adhering it to this pocket, but I have to be, be sure that I'm clear of the magnet because it can't pass through all those layers and I don't think I am. So probably not do that, but I did like the look. Um, 
That's why it's so important to design everything at once because magnet placement is critical to make sure you're not uh, just adding so many layers on top of the magnets that they won't hold. Okay, and then this is going to be our last piece, and I'll have to check and see if I need to trim it at all, but I think we're going to be okay. Yep, we are. Okay, so let's see. So this is what I was thinking is just leaving it here as sort of a stagger, which I like, but let's see where our magnet is. I'm just gonna take another magnet and see how much, yeah, see that? I don't think that's a good idea. I think there's too much overlap, although it is holding. So I'm gonna hold off on placing that. It's either going to get added right here and we still have the pocket or I'm going to make it an insert. I have not decided, but I am going to use it on this page. So be sure to reserve this um, ephemera card and uh, place it with page three, and then we'll figure out how to um, how to use it a little bit later. And you'll see that in the walkthrough. I'm not going to do that on this video. I'm going to figure out a couple of other things. Um, so that's it. That's it for page three. I hope you guys like it. Here we go. One more look. Pretty straightforward. Got the matching uh, feathers on top and bottom. Brought in this eight by eight. This is from the, duh. let me tell you, from the 12 by 12 collection pack. This is from Patterns and Solids, and this is an ephemera card. So that is it for page three. Thanks everyone.